Welcome to Faith Center Imus. Thank you for joining us in the service today. Now, let us listen to the ongoing message. Okay, so this morning, we're starting a new series. And this series is entitled, The Overcomer That You Are. Sabihin nga natin, The Omer Overcomer That I Am. Ayan, the overcomer that you are, alright? Sa Bible po, tinawag po tayong overcomers. We are overcomers in Christ. And you will be amazed that it's so simple. It's already in the Word of God. But many people are not overcoming their circumstances, alright? And that would be fine for the world, but... For us believers, we should be overcoming every situation. We should be overcoming the world and whatever challenges, whatever trials uh, that come our way, we should be able to overcome them. So this morning, we'll also answer the question, are you an overcomer or an undertaker? Ayan, magkaiba po yung overcomer at saka undertaker. Okay? So let's turn our Bibles to the book of John chapter Chapter 16. Kung wala pong Bible ang katabi nyo, pagkakataon na po na i-share ang inyong Bible, make sure that they are um, reading with you. Okay? John 16.33 And dito makikita natin why even though you are a believer, even though you have been a Christian for some time, eh meron pa rin mga problems that come trials or challenges all right hindi pala exempted ang mga kristiyano all right but may good news po para sa atin john 16:33 says these things i have spoken unto you that in me sabi natin in christ that in christ or in me you might have peace so in christ sigurado pong may peace tayo are you in christ Amen. Therefore, you already have peace. May kapayapaan na kayo. And you should be able to acknowledge that peace. Huwag niyong pangungunahan ng panic. Huwag niyong pangungunahan ng troubled mind. Make sure you acknowledge the peace right away. When there is an issue, when there is a problem, kapayapaan muna ang isipin natin. Nandyan na yan. Hindi mo kailangan mangamba. Amen. Sabi mo sa katabi mo, huwag kang mangamba. Alright? So you don't have to fear, you don't have to be in doubt, you don't have to worry. Why? The peace of God is in you if you are in Christ. Alright? So it's so important that we are in Christ. In the world, it says here, in the world, you shall have tribulation. So we see the contrast. In me, in Christ, you have peace. In the world, you have tribulation. Ano yung tribulation? Ito yung mga trials. Ito yung mga pagsubok sa buhay. Alright? So, kung mananatili ka sa mundo, sa mundo lamang, alright, magkakaroon ka lang ng tribulation. Alright? But praise be to God, the good news is, you are in Christ. Amen? Because you are in Christ, though you are in the world, but you have peace while you're in the world. Amen? You you have peace even though you are in the world. Praise God. And then it says here, but be of good cheer, I have overcome the world. Therefore, if you are in Christ, you are also an overcomer of the world. All right? Actually, it says here, I have overcome the world as a believer, you also have overcome the world in Christ. Amen. Kaya tinatawag tayong overcomers in Christ Jesus. Now, not because the Bible calls us overcomers, automatically, makikita mo na yan sa buhay mo. Alright? You have to learn how to walk as an overcomer. Alright? Hindi ko mo tinawag kang um, nurse. Eh, eksakto. Alam mo na kagad ang gagawin mo. Sometimes, pag pumasok ka sa loob ng hospital, doon mo palang malalaman yung mga dapat mong gawin. Alright? Surprisingly, it's different when you just learn it in college and then pagtapak mo, andami mo palang aaralin. Alright? So, 
as a believer as well, we're called overcomers, but you have to learn how to operate as an overcomer. And praise be to God, it's all in the manual. Asa ang manual natin? Itaas ang manual natin? It's all here. Alright? Hindi kayo lalayo. Hindi nyo kailangan bumili ng self-help books. Alright? Self-help books are okay, but guess what? We have the best book there is, and that is your Bible. Amen? Okay. So let's continue. Sabi ng iba, eh bakit naman ganun, pastora? Believer na ako eh, may problema pa rin pala. O, diba? Sabi ni nanay, oo nga. O, diba? Nagkakaproblema rin pala. Because while you are still in the world, there will be tribulations. But guess what? You can always, sabi natin lahat, always, always overcome the situation. Pwede pala yun. All the time, you can always overcome because Jesus Christ overcame the world. Therefore, you will overcome all the time as well. But you have to know how. So yung pong pag-aaralan po natin ngayon, how do I overcome? Alright? Now, huwag niyo pong iisipin, pag meron pong problem sa buhay, eh talunan na kagad. Ganun ba yon? Ibig sabihin, may, pag may problema, talunan ng kagad or loser kagad. It doesn't mean when a person has a problem in life, eh, talunan na kagad ang usapan. Talo yan, may problema sa buhay eh. Of course not. When problems come your way, it is an opportunity for you to shine. For you to overcome the situation. David had a very big problem. Sino yung malaking problema ni David before? Goliath, it's a very big problem. Malaki pa ang problema ni David. Pero hindi ibig sabihin may problema siya, talunan na kagad. Alright? It is his time to shine. Amen? So it was his opportunity to show everyone who his God is. It is his opportunity to show that he can overcome any giant in his life. Amen? So, ganun din tayo mga believers. Pag may problema, ito na ang pagkakataon para pakita mo the overcomer that is in you. The overcomer that you are. That's your opportunity. It's your time. Amen? So, wag po kayong natatakot. Wag kayong nalulungkot. Bakit naman ganun? May problema na naman ako. Hindi. It's your time to shine. Amen? Sabi mo sa katami mo, It's your time to shine. It's your time to overcome. Alright? So, hindi ibig sabihin may problema, loser ka agad. Hindi. Hindi po totoo yan. It's your time to overcome every problem in your life. So, huwag matatakot. Huwag manghihina ang loob. Alright? Rather, be, be not afraid. Jesus is with you. Amen? Kasama niyo ang Panginoon. Overcoming a problem is actually a believer's skill. Sabi natin, skill. Pag sinabing skill, you're not born with that. Noong na-born again ka, hindi ka kagad, Uy, alam ko na kung paano maging overcomer. Hindi po. Para pong pag-aaral yan ng gitara. Nung pinanganak ka ba, marunong ka na mag Hindi pa. You learn. Kahit gano'ng kasimple ang pag-gitara, kala mo, alam, ano? Gano'ng kasimple ang pag yan po ay isang bagay na pinag-aaralan. So, it is with being an overcomer. You are called an overcomer, but you learn how to become an overcomer. That's why we need to renew our minds. Amen? Renew your minds according to the Word. Everything is in the Word of God. Amen? So, paano bang maging overcomer? Ha? Sabi ng iba, bakit yung ibang mga Christian, bakit si pastora, parang mukhang walang problema, parang caring-carry nila. Okay? But in truth, hindi namin kine-carry. Ayan, di ba sabi yung mga kasalita ngayon, carry niya eh, carry. Hindi natin kine-carry ang ating mga problema, we cast it. Ano yung cast it? We cast all our cares unto the Lord. Alright? Hindi uso sa atin ang carrying your problems. Hindi uso sa atin ang carrying your loads. What you have to do is to cast all your cares upon the Lord. Now, some people, They think it's their responsibility to carry the load. Alright? Sa matagal na panahon, yan pong naituro sa atin. Pag may problema, kargahin mo. Ha? Yung talagang kargang-karga, sapong-sapo, walang malalaglag. Ha? Isipin mo mabuti yan. You're brood about it. And in fact, what you're doing is you're worrying. Alright? But the truth is, the Lord says, just like Sister Sally uh, mentioned a while ago, cast All. So we natin lahat all. Cast all your cares upon the Lord. Why? 
Because He cares for you. Bakit mo kakargahin yan? Hindi mo trabaho yan. Sabi mo sa katabi mo, hindi mo trabaho yon. Hindi mo trabaho na mag-alala, mag-isip, isulat-sulat, i-drawing-drawing yung problema mo. Why? Because the Lord has already instructed us, cast your cares upon the Lord. Amen? So this skill of a believer is that they have learned over time because of maturity, because of the Word of God, reading and reading, hearing and hearing the Word, they have learned over time that it is useless. So you more useless. It is useless to carry the load. It is useless to carry any problem at all. Ba't mo kakargahin? It's such a waste of time. It's such a waste of energy. It's such a waste of brain cells. Amen? Nauubos ang brain cells sa kakaisip mo sa problema when you can just cast all your cares unto the Lord. Over time, this is a skill that believers learn. Ano yung skill na yun? Pag dumating ang problema, Lord, I cast it all to you. The moment it comes to you, Lord, I refuse to worry. Hindi ako mag-aalala. I cast all my cares unto you. That's a skill. That's something that you learn by hearing and hearing the Word of God. That's something you fully entrust to the Lord. Lord, sabi na salita mo, cast all my cares upon you. Therefore, pagdating ng problema, I cast it all unto you. Hindi na ako magtatagal, hindi ko na ibubrood over yan, right? And you know why? This is the reason why some believers look like they don't have any problems. Why? They're not carrying it. Hindi nila carry, casty, okay? They don't carry their problems. So if I were you, if you're a believer, a new born again believer, okay, learn it. Something that we learned for a long time, okay? Something na tumagal, matagal pa ba namin na intindihan, alright? But learn it that you can cast all. Sabi natin, let all cast all your cares tungkol sa pera, tungkol sa tuition, tungkol sa pagkae, tungkol sa pananamit, tungkol sa buhay pag-ibig. Ayan, lahat yan, cast all your cares unto the Lord. Amen? And that's a skill that you learn to do. Noong una, parang tinatrial ko pa, mga one day lang, Lord. Okay? Bukas ko na ikakast sa iyo ang cares ko. Yung iba naman, two days, Lord, two days. Ah, sige na nga, Lord, sa'yo na. But later on, you know, you realize the moment a problem gets to you, Lord, I won't even waste a single moment with this problem. I cast all my cares unto you. Amen! Come on, bless Him! And the reason why we can do this is because He affectionately loves you. You are so dear to Him, hindi bagay sa'yo ang nag-aalala. Amen? Ayaw niyang nag-aalala ka. Alright? Hindi bagay sa'yo, nakakunot ang noo. Amen? So why sweat it? The Lord is taking your cares for you, but you have to cast it. You have to let go of all your cares. Amen. Praise God. Now, so itong mga taong to, they have found out the truth from the Word of God that it is easier, right? Easier to live in this world. How? By having that peace and casting all our cares unto the Lord. Are you an undertaker or are you an overcomer? Ano po ba yung undertaker? Undertakers, they take the problem and they're under it. They take the problem, they care for the problem, they brood over the problem, hinihimay-himay yung problem. They care so much about the problem. All day long, they think about the problem that's caring about it. When you care for someone, lagi mo siyang iniisip, tama? It's the same thing. You become an undertaker when you take the problem and you care for the problem. You care what they say. Ano na bang update sa problema ko? Bakit inaalam mo pang update sa problema mo? What's the latest sa aking problema? That's an undertaker. You care so much about the problem rather than caring about what the Word of God says. The Word of God says, Cast all your cares upon me for I care for you. Amen? Mas isipin natin ang caring and loving sa atin ng Panginoon kesa doon sa problema mo. Amen? 
Praise God. All right. Now, what is an overcomer? Kanina, undertaker, you take and you're under the problem. An overcomer is the problems come, but you're over it. You're on top of it. Okay? That's what an overcomer is. We are not denying the existence of it. Ibig sabihin, hindi mo sinasabing, ah, wala, wala, wala akong problema. Hindi, hindi, wala akong problema. Hindi ho tayo ganun. Hindi tayo in denial. Alam natin may problema, kaya lang alam natin kung saan natin ilalagay ang problema. Alright? And the Word of God tells us that the enemy is under our feet. Okay? So put it under your feet. At pag meron kayo nasa ilalim ng paa nyo, huwag nyo na silipin. Pag may natapakan kayo sa ilalim ng paa nyo, huwag nyo na pong himay-himayin at aamuyin. Paano ba to? Chocolate ba ito? <laughs> at tikman ko nga, ay hindi chocolate, buti na lang natikman ko. <laughs> okay, huwag nyo na pong alamin at himayin pa kung anong nasa ilalim ng paa nyo. Pag may natasa ilalim ng paa nyo, ipunas nyo na lang. Alright? At huwag nyo nang tignan. Amen? Let it remain under your feet. You are an overcomer. Alright? The thing is, some people don't become an overcomer because they have learned to live with problems. Meron ba tayong area sa buhay natin na nakasanayan na lang natin? We have learned to accept it and it's been part of our lives. Day in and day out, you have learned to adjust to the problem instead of overcoming the problem. Yan po ang mga undertakers. Alright? So, I, I would like to show you the contrast so that I can show you how you can become an overcomer. Paano po ang mga undertakers? Lahat tayo may pintuan sa bahay. Tama? Now, sometimes yung pintuan natin, hindi ko alam kung tama Tagalog ko, natatanggal sa bisagra. Okay, yung hinges. Okay, natatanggal yan. So, lalaylay. So, what you do now is that when you open it, you have to lift it up. Bubuhatin mong ganyan, di ba? Para mabuksan mo at para masara mo. Okay? So, that's what you do. Every time you enter that door and you exit the door, you lift it up to open it and you lift it up to close it. Alright? But some people, they've learned to just open by lifting and close by lifting. Okay? Walang ginagawa tungkol doon sa bisagrang nasira. Kaya buong pamilya, pati si Junior, pati si ate, kada dadaan sa pinto, abay lahat sila binubuhat nila yung pinto para makalabas pasok. And in their lives, they have gotten used to that. Nasanay na sila, ang lalaki nga ng mga muscle nila eh. Sabi nung kaibigan, ba't ang laki ng muscle mo? Wala yan, jeans. <laughs> jeans, talaga kami malalaki lahat muscle namin. But actually, it's because they have learned to live with a problem. They have adjusted to the problem. Okay? And nobody's doing anything about it. They have not asked the Lord, Wisdom, Lord! Kailangan ko na wisdom, paano ayusin ang bisagra? Okay? So, they have never really done anything about it. Alright? Because they have not asked help from the Lord, and that is why nasanay na sila. Kaya pag pumapasyal ka sa bahay na iyong kaibigan, binubuhat mo rin ang pinto nila. Okay? Ano ginagawa mo? Ah, sinusubukan ko lang kung mabigat ang pinto nyo. <laughs> Yung pala, nasanay ka na na lahat ng pintuan sa bahay nyo, e eh, binubuhat mo. Bakit? Hindi inaayos ang problema. Some people have learned to adjust to their situation. Okay? They have learned to adjust and have made it part of their lives. That is not being an overcomer. That is being an undertaker. You keep on lifting those heavy weights. All right? We are not called to be undertakers. You are called to be an overcomer. Amen? Sabi nga natin that I am an overcomer in Christ. Meron kasing kasabihan sa Pilipino, tayo po, na hindi po maganda. Alam niyo po kung ano yon? Sabi nila, pag maiksi ang kumot, matutong bumaluktot. Mali! Di ba? Pag maiksi ang kumot, bumili ka ng bagong kumot. Bakit ka laging babaluktot? Di ba kukuba ka naman? Ibig sabihin, titiisin mo na yung pagkakabaluktot mo. all the days of your life and not do anything about it? 
That is wrong. That is not what God called us to be. We are called to be overcomers. Amen. Bakit hindi mo sabihin, Lord, thank you sa provision para makabili ako ng mahaba-habang kumot. Amen. So people, you know, the, the Filipinos, alam kong matiisin, but you know, in some in some ways, yung pagiging matiisin natin, pati problema tinitiis natin is not good. That is not being an overcomer. All right? So we're learning today to renew our minds that that is not the, the, the best the best that God has for you. You are not to accept this kind of condition, this kind of situation. Babaluktot na lang ako all the days of my life para magkasya sa kumot. Alright? Sabi mo sa katabi mo, bumili ka ng bagong kumot. <laughs> Alright? So, that is, um, those are the things that tayo mga Filipino, sometimes we pride ourselves with that. But it's actually wrong. It's not being an overcomer. You're more than a Filipino. Alright? You are a believer. You are a child of God. You are an heir to the kingdom of God. Tapos babaluktot ka lang? Amen. May kausap ba ako? Praise God. So we're not to carry our problems. We are to cast all our problems unto the Lord. Don't think it's your responsibility. When I say your responsibility, hindi mo responsibilidad na pag-isipan, ng pag-isipan, ng pag-isipan, hanggang hindi ka na makatulog, alright, ang problema mo. You are, let's say may utang ka, you are supposed to pay those debts. But you are not to worry about it. Because masisira ang diskarte mo, puro worries lang na nasa isipan natin. Amen? Alright. So, if we have been taking the problem, making it part of our lives, that is being an undertaker. And I'm here today to tell you that you are not an undertaker. Okay? You are not an undertaker. You are overcomer in Christ Jesus. Let's go to 1 John chapter 4, verse 4. 1 John chapter 4, verse 4. Sabi dito, are you there? You are of God. Saan ka galing? God. You are of God. You came from God. You are of God, little children. And have overcome them. Past tense na naman. You see, the Lord sees you as an overcomer. Right? But again, today we're learning, pa, paano nga ba mag-overcome? Ayan. So number one, cast all your cares unto the Lord. You overcome. Let God deal with your problem. Let God deal with your supply. Alright? So it says here, you are of God, little children, and have overcome them. That's how God sees you. Because greater is He that is in you than he that is in the world. Amen. Sabi nga natin, greater is He that is in me than He that is in the world. Alright? Sino yung He, He na yon? Yung nasa sa inyo, none other than Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ is in you by the Holy Spirit and He's greater than He, the devil, alright, that is in the world. So ano pang kinakatakot mo? Huh? Will you overcome? Will you over Surely you will overcome. Somebody Jesus, I have overcome the world. Therefore today, even right now, I'm telling you today, you already have overcome the world. That is the truth. All right? Ano gagawin niyo na lang? Lalakaran niyo na lang. All right? Yan ang title mo. Lalakaran mo na lang. Alam niyo, meron pong, um, meron pong attitude ng tao. Alam na nila kung sino sila, kaya lang hindi nila nilalakaran. For example, yung mga students. Okay? May mga students, alam nilang studyante sila, oras ng klase, dapat nasa school sila, dapat nag-aaral sila. Alam nila student sila eh. Ha? Kaya lang, hindi nila nilalakaran ang pagiging studyante nila. Asan sila? Andon sa Dota. Okay, andon, naglolol sila. Ano yung lol? Lol. <laughs> okay? So, lol, lol sila doon. Alright? So, that's what they do. What are they doing? Are they acting like students? No! They are not acting like students. They are acting like, ano ba tawag doon? Mga tambay. Okay? 
Sayang. Ano po nangyayari? They lose out on receiving the benefits. So it's the same thing with us. We are called overcomers. All right? But we have to walk as an overcomer. And the ways of an overcomer, number one, simply, simply lang, cast all your cares unto the Lord. You become an overcomer. Amen? It may be so simple, but it's the beauty of it. No toiling. Amen? That's the beauty of how things, how God does it. By His grace, you just cast all your cares unto the Lord. Sa umpisa alam nyo, mahirap yan. Parang, Lord, bibitawan ko ba itong problema na to? Baka, ang sinasabi mo dyan, baka hindi mo kaya. That's what you tell the Lord. But if you fully trust in the Lord, sinasabi nga sa atin sa Isaiah, great is your peace. Great, perfect peace is what you have. Amen? Sabi mo sa katawi mo, bitawan mo na yan. Alright? So sabi niya, greater is He that is in you than He that is in the world. Amen? Now, another thing that we have to understand is the importance of your identity. Sabi natin lahat, identity. Diyan po gali yung identification card o yung ating ID. Alright? How important is an ID? Very important. Alam niyo, alam po ng mga guardian, no ID, no entry. Di ba? No ID, no entry. So, it is so important that you have an ID. If you lose your ID, alright, marami pong pwedeng mangyari. Okay? Maraming abala. So, the ID or your identification is very important. You know, when we were in um, San Diego, California, Nagta-travel po kami by, by road sa, sa car. And then sabi sa amin nung kaibigan namin, alam nyo, may border dyan. Okay? May border dyan. Pag lumagpas ka dyan, right? it's the border of Mexico. Pag lumagpas ka dyan, sabi niya, uh, mahihirapan tayo bumalik dahil hindi nyo dala mga passport nyo. At hindi rin daw nila dala ang passport nila. So they're Filipinos. All right? So sabi niya sa amin, Uh, si Pastor Mike ang nagda-drive nung sabi niya, uh, Pastor Mike, ingat ka, to-turn na tayo dito. Hindi tayo pwede lumagpas. Why? Because we did not have our ID. At kung kami po'y nakalagpas doon, makakapasok kami ng Mexico. Pero hindi kami makakalabas ng Mexico. Lalo na itsura natin, mukha tayong Mexicano. Alright? Maski sabihin mo doon sa, sa mga guards doon, uh, I'm no Mexican. Ha? Huh? No, habla Espanyol. Ha? Maski mag-explain, explain ka pa dyan, hindi nila tatanggapin na explanation mo, where is your passport? Your passport is an identification. Amen? Tatanungin ka, asa ng ID mo? Ah, wala. No ID. Okay? No entry. How important is our identification? Our identification affects our lives. It really affects our lives. Who do you identify yourselves with? In your ID card, you have there, for example, yung pangalan ko, gumawa po ako ng ID eh. Oh. Uh, my ID tells me, Maria Ana S. Bunye, tells me I belong to the family of Bunye. So your, your ID or your identification tells to whom you belong to. Okay? So, citizenship, Filipino. Date of birth, December 26, 19. Hulaan nyo na lang, okay? Sex, female. Position, pastor of Faith Center Imus. Affiliation, Jesus Faith Christian Fellowship. Alright? Membership, 1992 to present. Condition, healthy. Blood type, O. Height, Five something. Pwede na yun, ha? <laughs> Wait, 100 something. <laughs> okay na, hulaan nyo na lang. Educational attainment, college graduate, restriction, non-pro driver, issued by Jesus Faith Christian Fellowship. So this uh, information tells something about who I am and that affects me. Because I know where I belong. Kung sakasakali isang tao, nagkaroon na amnesia, the ID would be very useful. Amen? Wala pa nga yung address. Alright? But it will help the person. Okay? Mamaya pa natin papakita yung isa. Okay, mamaya pa yun. So, it will help um, the person to locate where you belong, kung sinong tatawagan nila. Alright? And that's how important our ID is. Alright? 
So you need to know, if you want to become an overcomer, you are an overcomer, let me correct myself, but if you want to walk as an overcomer, you need a new ID. Alright? A new ID. And that ID, where do we get that? The identification that we should have is only in Christ Jesus. Pakipatay muna yan, mamaya na yung isa. Okay? So, Meron po isang story. I, do, I know you're, you're familiar with that. Alam po natin story. It's a movie actually. The Man in the Iron Mask. Who knows the story? The Man in the Iron Mask. Uh, sino yung artista? DiCaprio. Leonardo DiCaprio. Alright? So siya po yung artista doon. And uh, the story goes that meron palang kambal itong hari. Okay? May kambal yung hari, but in order for him to have no rival, itong, nung bata pa sila, yung kambal e eh, pinaalaga sa isang, like an old woman, na blind pa yata yung woman na yun. Alright? And this twin brother lived, lived a very ordinary life. In fact, an impoverished life. Right? Very poor siya, inutusan siya, ganun po ang buhay niya when he was supposed to be royalty. Okay? So he lived a very simple life. Right? He begs once in a while. And then, nung lumaki na siya, hindi na maitago ang kanyang muka. Kita na lahat ng tao, kamukha siya nung king. This is actually what happened. They took him, put him in prison, but made sure na yung muka niya nasa iron mask. Right? Para sa ganon, hindi siya madiskubre. So for some reason, the king, the twin brother, the evil brother, ayaw po siyang papatay. Bakit? May superstition siya. Baka mamatay din siya. Something like that. This is actually based on a true story. This is based on the life of King Louis XIV of France. Alright? And they made, of course, tunwik na lang nila yung story. But um, they were wondering why there was this man in a special prison, hindi pinapatay, pero nakatago ang muka. Right? And so, as the story went, sa mga nakapanood po ng movie, uh, Leonardo DiCaprio was told that he was the brother of the wicked king. So sabi, ipapalit ka namin dahil mas mabait ka. At yung, yung buong France ay nagsasuffer because of this wicked king. So, nung nalaman niya na siya pala ay isang hari din or isang prinsipe, at first, nagre-resist pa siya. But later on, for a noble cause, sabi niya, all right. I will do it. Anong ginawa niya? He learned. He trained himself. Alright? How do I act as a king? How do I speak? How do I wave my hand? How do I dance as a king? How do I relate to people as a king? So just like us, once you find out who you are in Christ, you start learning. Just like right now, we're learning how it is to be an overcomer because you're called to be an overcomer. Amen. So this king, to, make, to cut the short, uh, the story long, uh, the long story short, all right, is that he be, he they replaced him with this king, the good king, all right, and Chapo ang naging king Louis the Fourteenth of France, and he ruled and reigned uh, in a wise way sa buong France po. Okay. So yung po yung story ng. Um, the man in the iron mask. Pero alam niyo, huwag na tayo lumayo. Meron ngayon telenovela na ganyan din. Yung pinagpalit yung mga anak. Alam niyo ba yon? Muling buksan ang puso. Okay? So alam ko, basta kakarelate kayo. Alam niyo, pinagpalit si Julia at saka si Enrique Hill. O, di ba? Kaya ako nanonood kasi yung anak ko nanonood eh. Okay, so pinagpalit. So as the story goes, because Julia Montes did not know her true identity, anong buhay niya? Namuhay siyang mahirap, namuhay na uh, inaape, alright? Namuhay na, na parang walang, pag, uh, walang possession sa buhay. But once they found out their true identity, nagkaroon po ng switch, alright? So, panoorin nyo na lang para sa detalye. But this is my point. The point is, once you find out who you really are, there are going to be some good changes. Amen? Julia Montes started to experience the good life. Pa-shopping-shopping na lang siya ngayon. Pakain-kain na masasarap na pagkain. She is now living a rich life. Why? When she found out her true identity, okay, there became or there came a great 
change in her life. Let me tell you today, you are not just a Filipino citizen. You are not just who you are, born to your parents, but you have a Father in Heaven who owns everything. You are a child of God. You are an inheritor in Christ, Jesus Christ. That should change your days today. Amen? Anak ka ng hari. Amen? Anak ka ng hari. That should change your life. That should straighten up your shoulder. You should walk and talk differently today. Amen? That is more true than the parents that you have today. With all respect to the parents. But the real you is the spirit man and you were born again when you, yes, I know na pinanganak kayo dito sa mundo, alright? But listen to me, you were born again. And when you got born again, you now have a new father in heaven. You now have a new brother in heaven. You now have a new family in heaven. You now have an inheritance in heaven. Amen? So it changes everything. You have to understand what you have when you got born again. Alright? Yes, you still have your natural family, but more than that, you have a heavenly Father. More than that, you belong to the heavenly kingdom. Amen? So it changes everything. Dapat magbago po ang pananaw natin sa ating sarili. So, let me have that second ID. Alright? Alright? Kung napapansin nyo, pareho pa rin ang mukha ko. Iba na rin yung... It, this is the new creation ID. So basically... Ang pangalan ko na po ay Maria Ana S. Bunye. Hindi ko po ito gagawin, ha? Iksabihin, this is who I am in the Spirit. In Cristo de Dios. In Christ of God. Ginagawa ko lang pong Tagalog or Spanish ang dating. Ang citizenship ko, I'm not just a Filipino. I am a heavenly citizen. And that will change my perspective. Hindi hanggang dito lang ang buhay. Amen po ba? Alright? And then what else? Date of birth from eternity. Okay? Sex, am I female or male? Sex is irrelevant in Christ. There's neither male nor female in Christ. Amen? What else? Position, I am a child of God. Ambassador for Christ. Heir of the kingdom. Ang affiliation ko, more than being affiliated to Jesus Faith Christian Fellowship, my affiliation, affiliation is in Christ alone. My membership my membership started from being born again to eternity. Condition, divine health. Blood type, Jesus' blood. Height, weight, irrelevant, your honor. Okay? It's irrelevant. Educational attainment, wala po yan. Hindi po yung pinibila. It is irrelevant, your honor. Restrictions, none. And this is issued by Abba Father and His Son, Jesus Christ. That is also your identification. That is your ID. Amen? How important is your ID? It tells so much about you. It tells you you don't have a limitation. You don't have a limitation. Alright? Your limitation is Jesus Christ. And with Jesus, there is no more limitation. Amen? It should change our mind. We should be so happy today. Amen? Praise God. Okay. So let's continue. To be an overcomer, we need to have the right identity. Go to 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17. 2 Corinthians 5, 17. And here is where it is stated. Hindi yung pwedeng sinabi ko lang. Tingnan niyo po sa Bible. Totoo ba yan? Bago ba akong nilalang? Bago na ba ang identity ko? Okay? You see it from the Word of God. Don't just take it from me. 2 Corinthians 5.17 says, Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, are you in Christ? Are you a believer of Christ? Therefore, you're in Christ. If anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. Sa Tagalog, bagong nilalang. Alright? Bagong nilalang. All things have passed away. Do you have old baggages in your life? Meron ka bang mga, mga issues dati? Alright? All things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. Amen? 
So, yung sakitabi mo, bago na to, chong. <laughs> Bago na to, di ba? Bagong bago na to. Huwag mo sasabing ako pa yung dati, bago na ako. Alright? And we identify with Christ because Christ, listen to me, how did that happen? Christ became us so that we can become Him. All that He is. Jesus Christ became the Son of Men so that we can be the sons of God. Ulitin ko po. Jesus Christ became the Son of Men so that we can become the sons of God or the children of God. There has been a divine exchange. Divine exchange. Alright? So we became all Him. But you have to know, what do I have in Him? Kaya po dapat pinag-aaralan natin, what do I have in Christ? Acts 17.28 And we'll just read a portion of it. Acts 17.28 The truth is, it says here, For in Him we live and move and have our being. Do you know why you're alive today? You're breathing today not just because of your organs functioning. You're breathing today because Christ lives in you or Christ makes you live makes you breathe you're moving today because of Christ you are who you are today because of Christ Jesus alam niyo maraming tao hindi nila ma-acknowledge si Jesus sa buhay nila not knowing that the reason why they are living and moving and being who they are is all because of Jesus Jesus Christ holds everything together. You think your body is going to move without Christ? Of course not. Yung nakikita natin sa mundo, biyaya yan ng Diyos. Kung bakit sila nabubuhay, kung bakit sila gumagalaw, alright, who they are, it is because of the grace of God. And if you have that thinking, I live, I move only because of Christ, magkakaroon kayo ng uh, respect and honor for Christ Himself. For knowing that the only reason you live is because of Jesus Christ. Amen? That is the reason why you are alive today. So to whom you identify yourselves with makes a lot of difference. Okay? Some people identify themselves. Instead of identifying themselves with Christ, they identify themselves with things. Mga bagay. Alright? With groups. For example... Um, tayo, tayo mga Filipino, we identify, we are Filipino. Okay? Iba man, I am Americano, uh, Chinese, Africano. <laughs> okay? So they identify, and they identify themselves so much with their, with their citizenship that means um, that they think that's all they are, a Filipino. Okay? But we're more than Filipinos. So, alam niyo po, pag ang tao masyadong nationalistic, I'm not saying it's wrong, no? Mabuti, alam natin Filipino tayo, and that's good. That's who we are. But we're more than that. Minsan, masyadong nagiging nationalistic. Alam naman yung mga Pinoy, masyadong sensitive. Alam niyo ba yon? Sensitive ang mga Pinoy. Sa mga Hollywood movies or TV shows, pag binanggit ang Pilipino at may nasabing mali ang Amerikano, di ba minsan ang Chinese ginagawa nila, eh Chinese, nga 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 nga, niloloko nila. Okay lang sa mga inchik yun. Pero pag tayo, niloko sa Hollywood, hala, nagsa-strike ang mga tao sa, sa, dito sa Pilipinas at maging abroad. Apologize to the Filipinos. We're so nationalistic. Because why? That's all you think you are. You're Filipino. Pero tayo mga believers, dapat hindi na tayo na-affect sa mga ganon. Yes, I'm Filipino. But yes, I'm all, but more than that, rather, I am a heavenly citizen. So hindi ka masyado affected. Eh, ano ngayon sabihin nila, mga, mga Pilipino, mga kuripot, o mga Pilipino ay ganito. Eh, ano ngayon? I'm more than Filipino. Are you getting my point? So some people are so, um, you know, so into their identification in the natural that they get so sensitive, konting problema affected sila. You're not like that. You are an overcomer. That's why narinig mo, mga Pilipino kuripot, mga Pilipino domestic helper, hello, I'm not all that. Alright, hindi lang yun, ang, hindi lang ganun ang Pilipino, you know more than that. Don't get affected by those things. 
Sa, sa Hollywood, apologize, apologize, apo, nagpapa-apologize sila sa mga Pilipino. At ganun din naman yung mga blacks. Alright? They're so, um, you know, so identified with their race, with their citizenship. Pag nakanti mo ang kanilang kulay, okay, nagagalit sila. It's a big issue. Right? Masyado naman silang ano sa race nila. So, that is the, the cause of being so just into the identification in the natural. Another one, religion. Okay? Praise God, wala tayong religion. Alam niyo po ba yon? We don't have a religion. Religion did not die for us. Jesus Christ died for us. Amen? So, religion. For example, the Hindus. Right? Do you know that their religion affects their lives so much? So much. Right? Bakit po? Ang mga Hindus po, they believe in reincarnation. Alam po ba natin reincarnation? You come back in the, the next life, alright? Parang nire-recycle lang ang buhay. Okay? So, how do they, they, this is their belief. Their belief is, if you embrace whatever you are, whoever you are in this lifetime, okay, if you embrace it, kunwari, uh, beggar ka, abay, Embrace mo yan, yakapin mo yan, at huwag mong babaguhin. Pag binago mo yan, alright, you will come as a lower form in your next life. But if you embrace it, okay lang sa'yo maging mahirap, okay lang sa'yo maging pulube, okay lang sa'yo walang kainin, if you embrace that and accept that, guess what? In your next life, pag namatay ka, at alam ko mamadali mamatay yung tao na yon, in your next life, you will become like a... Uh, Maybe a senator or a prince. Why? Because you accepted your life. And that affects, they really believe that. Imagine ang buhay na nasayang, inaccept mo na ikaw ay beggar, inaccept mo ikaw ay manlilimus na lang habang buhay. And then you find out on the other life, wala na palang next life. That's a sad story. Pagdating mo sa kabilang buhay, hindi pala practice yun, yun na yun. And you just accepted it. See how your identification will affect your life. Are you getting this? All right? So, our identification affects our lives. The way we live, the way we move, and who we are is being affected by what you identify yourselves with. Okay? So, wag yung mamalita yung religion. People's lives are ruined because of religion. Okay? Sabi ng isang religion, mas mahirap ka, mas malapit ka sa Diyos. Alright? Walang katotohanan po yun. Amen? Pag malapit ka sa Diyos, pinayayaman ka ng Diyos. Yun ang totoo. Amen? Come on, let's bless Him. Praise God. Now next, some people identify themselves with problems. Huh? Mga problems, biktima ako ng ganito. Biktima ako ng ganyan. They identify themselves with that. Alam mo, ang pamilya namin, pamilya kami ng mga hikain. Ayan. Hindi adhikain, hikain kami. Ha? Lahat kami may asma, buwat sa lola ko pa sa tuhod. Lahat po kami, lahat, inasma kami lahat. Kaya itong anak ko, itong, itong, itong papanganak na misis ko, ay asmatic din yan. Lahat kami. They identify themselves with problems, with the sickness in their lives. And they declare it over their lives. Ha, hikain kami, ganto kami, you know. They, they identify with. And sasabihin nila, alam mo kasi itong, uh, sabi nga ni Pastor, itong diabetes ko, <laughs> itong ulcer ko, itong, ano ba ba, almoranas ko, oh, sorry, <laughs> ito, <laughs> ano ba yun? Nasabihin ko yung rayuma eh, rayuma ko, ayan, lahat kinoko nila, kinokoha nila lahat na sakit. Alright? Hindi mo inaangkin ang mga sakit. Eh, paano ako magsasalita, pastora? Alam mo, pinagaling ako sa rayuma. <laughs> Sabi ko ng almoranas, pinagaling ako sa rayuma, pinagaling ako sa hika. Alright? And that's the way we should speak. Alright? And before long, you will see, not before, not, not so long, you will see the effect of your words in your life. Amen? Hindi yung lahat ng problema, kinuko mo, kinukuha mo lahat. Alright? We have to see our lives in Christ. I live in Christ. I move in Christ. And I have my being 
in Christ. That's how we should see ourselves. In Christ, because I am in Christ by His stripes, I am healed. In Christ, I am in Christ. That's why I live as a healed person. I live as a rich person. I live as a blessed person. Why? My identity is in Christ alone. Amen. Come on, bless Him. Thank you, Lord. Alright? So, importante po ang identification natin. Who do you identify yourselves with? Yes, you belong to a family, but more than that, identify yourselves in Christ. More than that, your father, more than your mother, identify yourselves in God's family. Okay? Because if you don't do that, what you're actually doing is you're tattooing yourself. Alam natin tato? Ha? Yung ta you're tattooing yourselves with the problems and issues of life. You make it part of your life. Okay? Um, meron po kami kilala. And for some reason, every event in his life, tinatattoo niya sa buhay niya. Ay, sa buhay niya. Sa katawan niya. What? He really does this. Um, nagkaroon siya ng car accident. Abay, nagpatato ng coaching car crashed. Namatay ang lolo niya, pinatatak ang pangalan ng lolo niya. Alright? Noong nagkaroon siya ng girlfriend number one, nandito sa braso niya. Girlfriend number two, nandito rin. Mauubusan na nga ng braso. <laughs> Kakatato sa buhay niya. Well, some people are like that. Every event in their lives, gusto nila nakatatak sa buhay nila. Are we in the spirit or are we in our minds? Let me correct that. In our minds. Tattooing ourselves with this identity. Are we tattooing ourselves na kami ay pamilyang mahirap lang, na buhay ng mahirap, mamamatay ng mahirap? Kami pamilyang sakitin, sakitin pinanganak, sakitin mamamatay. Are we tattooing ourselves with that? Do we see ourselves as this kind of family? Alright? Yung iba naman, ha? Ay nako, pamilya kasi yan ng mga babaero. Kaya ganyan yung mga yan. Alright? And I, I actually have a friend na... They have declared that over their lives. Buti na lang, born again na siya. Sabi niya kasi, mga gwapo kasi. Kaya sabi nila, pamilya namin talagang mga babaero. Galing pa sa tatay ko, lahat, eh lima silang mga lalaki. Puro gwapo. Sabi niya, lahat kami, babaero. Kasi habuling kami ng mga chicks. Okay, that is their confession. Kaya ano na born again ito, at nakilala namin yung pamilya, sabi ko, huwag kang magkakamali na yan ang dahilan mo, ha? Sabi ko, hindi ka babaero. Sabi niya, hindi ako babaero. <laughs> Alright? Because it's so sad that yung, yung brother niya, hala namin matibay na, Christian din. Kaya lang nahulog din. Why? For many years, they have been declaring pamilya kasi natin. Pag may nahulog sa kapatid, kasi iniisa-isa sila. Pag nahulog na yung isa, hindi, alam mo anak, Kasi babaero talaga tayo eh. Habulin talaga tayo ng chicks. Yun ang kanilang dahilan. Sabi ko, wag mong gagawing dahilan yan. Sabi niya, hindi po. <laughs> Sabi nga nung isang pastor na kasama ko, uupakan kita pag ginawa mong dahilan yan. Kasi magkakaibigan naman yan. Okay? So, ano lang yon Salitang ang magkakaibigan. Sabi, wag ka magkakamali, uupakan kita. Kasi bakit? That is a poor reason. You are more than just who you are. You are a child of God. You are no longer a slave of darkness. You are a slave to righteousness. Alright? You have a different nature. Kaya mong gagawin dahilan, eh, guwapo kasi ako. Eh, ano ngayon? Ha? Habulin kasi ako ng chicks. Eh, ano ngayon? Magtinu ka. <laughs> amen? Amen. But ayaw niyo mag-amen. Amen? Alright? Hindi po... Hindi po excuse yeah. That's a very poor excuse. Amen? You are in Christ, and Christ is in you. Amen? So your old identity is no longer you. Sino dito ang nag-apply sa trabaho, ang gamit yung ID, yung ID nyo pa sa grade school? Ha? Meron matatanggap na HR sa inyo? Okay? Nag-apply kayo ng visa, ang pinakita mo, college ID mo. Hello? Sabihin sa, excuse me, we cannot accept this. Alright? You cannot give all those ID. Those are old IDs. You are no longer the grade school in shorts. Okay? So, huwag nyo na pong gamitin yung old ID nyo. You have a new identity in Christ. Walk that way, live that way, move that way, and be that way. Amen? 
You are the overcomer in Christ. Don't use your old thinking. There is a new thinking. It's available to us. It's in the Word of God. Amen. We are called overcomers in Christ. And don't worry, the change has been done for you. We don't even have to, you know, yung sweat it out to change our identity. Alam niyo po sino palit na identity natin? Jesus Christ. He, done it, he has done it all. He has filled up the, the form for you. Siya na po gumawa ng bago niyong identity. Lalakaran mo na lang. Alright? Iba kasi, I want to have a new life. Magagawin lang, bibili silang bagong damit, bibili silang bagong kotse, bagong bahay, bagong workplace, bagong asawa, para magbago ang buhay. Hindi magbabago ang buhay mo sa mga pinapalta mo sa labas. It has to come from within. And Jesus did the hard part. He already changed you. Just walk in it. Amen? Just walk in it. Amen. May natutunan po ba tayo? In Christ, all things have become new. You are new today. You have a different, or you have a different family. Alright? So, huwag ka na magreklamo na magreklamo sa mga kamag-anak mong ganito. Mas may, ma- may meron ka pang isang kamag-anak na masaya. May kamag-anak ka na masigla. Amen? Yan, tingnan mo yung katabi mo. Yan, mga kamag-anak mo. You are all in Christ. So, if that other family is bothering you, and never mind, just come here to church, just fellowship, just have your faith group, and enjoy your new family in Christ. Amen? Praise God. Let me tell you, you are my family. Kami po ni Pastor Mike, ever since we've seen Faith Center Emus as our family. We have embraced you and we love you. Alright? Yun nga lang, iba sa inyo, di ko pa masyadong nakakausap, but we have considered this and we... In, in, in the natural, mas nakikita pa namin kayo kesa sa mga iba naming pamilya. Alright? So, embrace this family because this is your family in Christ. Amen? Now, let's continue. If you live in Christ or your mind has been changed in Christ, your prayers will also change. Okay? Magbabago pa ang prayer nyo. Because you know that Jesus Christ has made you rich. Alam niyo po ba ang prayer niyo hindi ganito? Lord, kulang na naman kami. Lord, wala na naman pambayad. Alright? Magbabago na. Ang sasabihin niyo ngayon, Lord, thank you sa provision. Ha- have you noticed that? It has changed. Now, some people say kasi, asa na ba yung yaman? Pastora, sabi sa salita na Diyos, ako'y pinayaman na ni Kristo. Okay? Because of his poverty, I was made rich. Okay. Asa na yaman, pastora? Okay, it starts this way. Huwag kayo apurado. Okay. Ganto po yun. First, you live in Christ. Alright? Your, the Word of God is now your life. You live in Christ. You make it your, your life principle, your guidance. You live in Christ. After you live in Christ, you move in Christ. It's going to start to affect the way you move, the way you talk. Magbabagong pananalita mo. Okay? Pagpasok namin sa bahay mo, hindi mo na sasabihin ganito, ay, pasensya na po kayo, mahirap lang po kami. Tinatanong ko, Hindi ko naman tinatanong. Pero kaya lang, ang mga mentality ng tao, alam nila, mahirap sila. They're so identified with their poverty. Pumasok ka, hindi ka naman nagtatanong. sabi nila, posensya na po kayo, mahirap lang po kami. Tinatanong ko? Hindi. Okay? Bakit mo sinasabi? Kasi you're so identified with the poverty. Alright? But guess what? In Christ Jesus, magbabago ang panalita mo. Sabi mo, pastora, pasok na sa palasyo ko. Amen. Pasok na. Kita nyo, maliit lang to ngayon. Intayin nyo. In the next few years, lalaki na ito, pastora. And you know what? That happened to us. There was this uh, woman from Las Piñas we have been visiting for some time. And noong una, ganun din yung attitude niya. Hiyang-hiya sa bahay niya. Pero alam nyo, nung nakakilala sa Panginoon, binago niyang pagsalita. Sabi niya kay Pastor Mike, Pastor Mike, balang araw, i-dedicate niyo to. Magiging two, anong tawag doon? Ha? Two story na to. Magiging two story na to, Pastor. Tapos yan, bibiling ko rin yung lupa na yon Sinabi niya lang yon But you know what? 
she continued to declare that. She continued to renew her mind according to the word. And true enough, we went there. Some three years ago, two-story na yung bahay niya, nabili niya ang lupa sa tabi niya. Amen! Come on! Live in Christ, move in Christ, and be all that you can be in Christ Jesus. It all starts out by living your life in Christ. Ha, huwag nyo hanapin kagad yung pera ngayon. Okay? In Christ, start enjoying your life in Christ. There are more enjoyable things than money. Amen? Dami! Naku, dami. Ha, yung pagmamahalan yung mag-asawa, yung pagmamahal ng inyong mga anak, yung mga kaibigan nyo, mga kapamilya nyo. All right? Those are things that money cannot buy. Just enjoy it. Just enjoy the peace that you have in Christ. Amen? Walang makakabili ng peace. Okay? Walang makakabili niyan. Alam nyo, ako rin noon, wala man ako ikwento sa inyo ng mga isdang nakatatayo. <laughs> wala pa akong ganon, yung mga isdang tumayo na dahil sa dami ng arena. But guess what? I, I went through some uh, period in my life na dumaan din kami sa sa kakulangan when I was a teenager and uh, what happened then was yung mother ko kasi hindi ko maalaman hindi ko naman inalam yung ref namin for some reason walang ilaw at saka hindi lumalamig hindi ko alam kung hindi niya sinasaksak dahil ayaw yung magbayad sa meral ko hindi ko naman inalam dahil bata pa ako nun but ang gagawin niya umaga pala magluluto na isang bundok na daing tapos eat all you can umagahan, tanghalian, gabihan. Isang lutuan lang yon Yun ang kainin mo. Okay? Ako naman tuwa-tuwa ako sa kinakain ko. Wala akong reklamo. She didn't make us feel na kawawa naman tayo. Wala naman pong ganun. Kaya lang, pag titingnan mo, daing, breakfast, lunch, dinner, pwede pa merienda. <laughs> okay? Eat all you can yun. Pero gusto niya kasi tipid, tipid, tipid. Okay? Pagka walang toothpaste, abay may asin. Okay? Madugo nga lang, pero may asin. Ano pa? Pag walang Soap. Eh, may bareta. May bareta, maligo ka. We didn't feel na kawawa naman kami. Pero, ganun na po ang situation namin. Dumaan lang kami a period of time, no? But, you know what? When I got to know the Lord, right? it improved my life. Kasi po, uh, let me see. Dalawa lang kaming unang na born again sa family. And, my family's life was also affected. Do you know that when you, you, you are blessed because of Jesus Christ, even your family gets blessed? Amen? Nabe-bless din sila because of your presence. Amen? So, that's what happened. So, I, I got to know the Lord and it changed my life. And I am enjoying life. Alright? I'm enjoying the prosperity na bigay ng Panginoon. Well, yung prosperity naman na na-enjoy ko, hindi naman po ako nakakapag-party sa Beverly Hills. Alright? Wala naman po akong Porsche. Hindi ah, nyo alam yung balita, no? Okay. Anyway, hindi <laughs> nyo alam yon. Party in Beverly Hills. May pinatala na kayo doon, nag-party-party. Alright? So anyway, but hindi nyo alam. Buti na lang, hindi kayo nakikinig ng balita kasi nakakainis. Okay, so anyway... Wala man kayong party sa Beverly Hills at wala kayong Porsche at sang katutak na bahay sa Ayala, Alabang. But guess what? You have peace while you are sleeping and that's the best. No money can buy that. Amen? Pumakain ka, natutulog ka, kasama mo ang pamilya mo, hindi yan mabibili ng pera. Amen? Mahimbing ang tulog mo. Sila hindi. <laughs> okay. So, you know... That's so good about having the prosperity of Christ. Walang, walang pangangamba. Okay? So, last two, last two. Pag may problema tayo, as an overcomer, laugh at your problems. The Word of God tells us that laughter is a medicine. It's like medicine. Okay? An overcomer laughs at his problem. Hindi dahil gusto mo lang tumawa. Do you know that God laughs at his enemies? Bakit tumatawa si Lord? Kasi alam niya, mas kaya nung gawin ng enemy, wala naman mangyayari yan eh. Walang talab sa iyo ang gawain ng kaaway. Amen. Do you know that? When people are against you, you become an overcomer by just laughing at them. Let me share something to you. When I took over here as pastor sa Faith Center, I heard some news na nakarating po sa akin at sabi nila, 
hindi kaya ni Mean okay, na magpastor sa Faith Center Imus dahil hindi niya kaya ang pressure ng pagpapastor. Okay? Nung nalaman ko yon, dahil babae daw ako, Wow. <laughs> Dahil babae daw ako. Okay? That's the news that came to me. Alam niyo yung narinig ko yung talaga, natawa talaga ako. Sobra natawa ako. Sabi ko, talaga? Talaga nakangiti ako. Sabi ko, yun ang sabi nila. Alam niyo ba't ako natawa? Number one, halatang hindi nila ako kilala. <laughs> Alright? Hindi nila ako kilala, kaya nasabi nila yon, Okay? And so I forgive them. It's no issue to me. I really laughed when I learned that. Number two, Wala namang, ano man sinabi nila, does not affect my calling and my purpose in God. Amen? It does not change even a bit. Yung mga sinabi na hindi ko daw kaya yung pressure dahil babae daw ako. Okay? Now, I, might be, I may be all woman to look at. Amen? But I have the Spirit of God inside of me that is greater than any male or female. Amen? So, natawa talaga ako. Pangatlo. Pangatlo. Kaya po ako natawa kasi sabi ko, ano ba yung sinasabi nilang pressure sa pagpapastor? Okay? Ano ba yung pressure? Alam niyo po ba, buhat ng tumapa kami ni Pastor Mike dito. It has never been a pressure, but it is pure pleasure serving all of you. It has been a pleasure. God made sure of that. You made sure of that. It has always been a pleasure. Ni kaya nagkamali lang siya sa letra, yung tao na yon. From pleasure to pressure. But you know what? Some people, you don't get offended when people talk against you. Why? You know what? They don't define you. They're actually defining themselves. Kaya yung narinig ko, sabi ko, eh siguro siya maraming pressure kasi ako, hindi ako maka-relate. I cannot relate. I cannot really relate. What pressure is he talking about? I could not relate. Alam niyo na staff, I could not relate. Sabi ko nga, di bale, sabi ko, okay lang yon. hindi nila ako kilala eh. Sabi ko nga daw. Alam niyo ba? Sabi ko nga sa staff, masarap akong kaaway. <laughs> masarap akong kaaway. Pag kaaway ko, anong ginagawa ko? Niririgaluhan ko. Okay? Niririgaluhan ko talaga. Alam niya na staff, tanong yung staff. Niririgaluhan ko sila. Huwag niyo akong awayin, ha? Okay. Niririgaluhan ko. <laughs> Bakit? The Word of God tells us. Remember? I'm an overcomer. You are an overcomer. The Word of God tells us, overcome evil with good. Okay? And so, when I hear people talk about me that way, niririgaluhan ko. And it sends coals of fire in their head. Ah, para silang pinuusan ng malamig na tubig. Ano ba yung sinabi ko? Diba? At alam po yan ng staff. They know that so well. Sabi ko, fight evil, not with evil, but fight evil or make evil cease. Bigyan mo ng katapusan yan by doing good. Loving them in spite of it all. Amen? That is an overcomer. So I'm giving you this example because people will always talk about us. Lagi naman eh, di ba? And they talk about you because, number one, maybe they don't love you. They're not walking in love. Alright? They don't know you. But praise God, not any of their words can change you, nor the plans of God for you. Kaya, tawanan mo ang iyong mga kaaway. Be that kind of an overcomer that you laugh at the face of your enemy. Hindi mo naman aasarin. Sabi mo lang, habang nangingit-ngit sila, I love you. Alright? All is well with me. Amen? I love you the love of the Lord. Tingnan niyo, magingit-ngit lalo yun. <laughs> ano ba to? <laughs> lalo sila mahihirapan sa sitwasyon nila. Tawanan niyo ang inyong problema. Amen? And just like I said, remember, we live, we move, we have our being in Christ. See Jesus Christ as your source of everything. What would man say to you that will change your life? Wala! Okay? Who defines you is Jesus Christ. And what Jesus Christ says about you is final. That's it. Alright? So what does it matter what they say about you? Kaya ang gagawin mo lang talaga, tatawanan mo sila. Hindi lang nila kasi alam ang plano ng Diyos sa inyo. Amen? 
Praise God. So, initindi ko nga mabuti. Sabi ko, siguro hindi niya binabasa Bible niya. Because anyone who just look at you as a man or a male or a female has not been reading his Bible. Kasi sabi sa salita ng Diyos, in Christ, there is neither male nor female, slave nor free. Ay, hindi nagbabasa ng Bible. Diba? The spirit man is what matters. The spirit man is who you really are. Last verse, Galatians 2.20. Galatians 2.20. So pag pinipintas ang kanila, huwag ka ma-offend. Alam nyo ba ang tunay na pinipintas nila? Si Kristo. Basahin natin to. Galatians 2.20 says, I have been crucified with Christ. It is no longer I who live. It's no longer you. It is Christ who lives in you. Christ lives in me. And the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith in the Son of God who loved me and gave Himself for me. It's no longer I who live. So kung pinipintasan kayo, guess ko sino ang pinipintasan nila? Ha? Huh? Mangamba sila. Pinipintasan nila si Kristo Jesus. Because it's no longer I who live. I died with Jesus Christ when He was crucified on the cross. Amen? And this is the good thing about the death of Jesus Christ. The death of Jesus Christ is also your death. Kung buhay si Kristo, alright, He did not die on the cross, then you did not die as well. Your old nature did not die if Jesus did not die. So praise be to God for the death of Jesus Christ on the cross. That meant your old nature is already, uh, already dead. Behold, the new you, the new you in Christ is here to conquer, to overcome every circumstance in this life. Amen? So we love that I am an overcomer in Christ. I overcome the world all because of Jesus Christ. Palakpakan po natin ang Panginoon. Thank you for watching the video. We hope you have learned principles from the Word of God that will change your life forever. Our messages are available in DVD and audio formats. You may contact us at the following phone numbers. 046-471-3516 and 046-515- 7459. If you want to sow to assist us in proclaiming the gospel, you may deposit to Jesus Faith Christian Fellowship, BPI Savings Account Number 1283-139235, Dueno Branch, Imus, Cavite. Or you may visit us at our church, 